broken hands at rest. God broke our hearts to go. He knew to take the best. And to Pauline, you will have the golden sun that shines each morning. Not a day goes by that you are not loved and missed. You are loved beyond words and this beyond measure. You are a loving and caring person with a nurturing spirit. You never fail to make everyone feel welcome and cherished. You will struck us with your unwavering kindness, your contagious laughter. You are like an essence. Our hearts still ache in sadness and secret tears still flows. No matter the gift in life, however great or small, to have you as an aunt was the greatest gift of all. The last time you took me to stop, and I asked you for a phone call, but I was out of credit. Knowing you, you would have to say something feisty, but you didn't mean it. And your reply was, how no I need for one hour can buy credit? <laughs> that is how jovial and yes, feisty you were. But nevertheless, you were there for everyone, no matter the circumstances. And to Pauline, I will never forget you and your kindness towards my family, especially my uncle. May his soul rest in peace. You loved and cared for him to the very last. You were there for me 17 years ago when I had my first son. You took me to the hospital and then again, seven years, you again. You are never too busy for no one. You mold me and guide me like a mother did to a daughter. And for that, I will forever be grateful. May the winds of love blow softly and whisper in your ear. We love and miss you, Auntie, and we wish that you were here. Deep in our hearts, your life is kept to love and cherish, but not to forget. No more tomorrow, but we can share yesterday are always there. A silent thought, a secret tear, keeps our memory ever so near. Sleep in perfect peace, my beloved and falling. I will never forget you. Farewell to a wife, a mother, grandmother, sister, and yes, a friend indeed. We will never forget you till we meet again. I love you and falling. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that we do, bless his holy name. Good morning to each and every one of us. I'm here to sing a song, but first I must say something about Hannibal. As you can all hear Denise already talk about her, she was a loving soul. And Hannibal was a cheerful giver. Most of all, she would give to the most and God in it once. That's a part of her work that she was doing on this part of life. But I must say, on the 3rd of December, while I was getting ready to go to church, and I heard that Auntie Pauline was in the hospital, and I said, I cannot go to church again, I must reach home by the hospital. And I went to the hospital, I was down there with her and her sons and families and friends. And I must say this about Aunt Pauline. In spite of her, she did sick, but she never showed us a dull moment. And I guess that's what, why most of us feel like that, because she never showed a dull moment that she was living in this part of life. And I went there with her and the rest of the family and were talking to her. I was encouraging her and coaxing her. And most of all, I was praying for her. And in all that moment, she was just conscious. She was just conscious. Even to the minute that we, this visited time up and she about to go leave the hospital, she was just conscious. And I just want to say, I'm thank God for, thanking God for giving Auntie Pauline the chance to reconcile with him. Auntie Pauline is no more here now. She's gone. We are here. And let us examine ourselves this afternoon, this morning, 
and see how far we are with God. Hallelujah. And uh, for those who have not yet accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, I'm asking you please to do so. Because death is real.
and families this afternoon that whatever God done, it's well done. Just trust the Lord and believe that He will make a way for us. Amen. Face was for the books. 
we could not even laugh to show how shocked we were. One thing, I, one thing I can tell you is that she was very stubborn and very determined. Now, if she's driving now, before she passed, if you saw her driving, she would be beating some breaker eyes out and turning her heads to the seats. It was a joke to see her riding a bicycle as she would sit in an upright position that she was so stiff. I can't imagine how she would bend her legs to pedal. I would always send her a list of things I needed before I would visit. One item on that list would be herring fish. Even, even on Friday, December 2nd, I was bothering her about herring. And she would always have a response to me. As Camille said, it would sound tasty, but if you know her, you know what she meant. And we even have an inside joke about herring. Because she would say I'm the only person. She and Ryan would say I'm the only person that begged herring. Because herring is not fish. Words can't describe how we miss her. She was just starting to find herself and be happy again. Man, she wanted to be on every trip that we would take. One thing I can say is that I'm happy she got her flowers before she died. And she knew how much we loved her and appreciated her. The last two years we traveled together, ate together. I will always remember the look on her face when I surprised her in Panama last year. The plans were already in place for this year, but she kept on finding an excuse each time the topic came up. On Friday, December 1st, when I left work, I would normally call her, as she was always my company. But I'm going to work at night, she would stay up with me so I don't fall asleep. Or in the morning, I would call her. One thing you can call Auntie Polly anytime and you will get her. No matter the hour of the night, if she missed the call, she's surely going to call you back. If she was busy, she would call you back. That Friday evening, she asked me if I remembered what today was. I responded, no. And she said, it's 30 years ago since her grandfather died. I said, Auntie Polly, you always remember those things. We talked for a while and she said, later, we're gonna fall in light in a flash. And there's one thing with her, she don't stay on the phone when rain is falling, because she's afraid of lightning. <laughs> I think that's the only thing she was afraid of. That same night, we were on a group call, Crystal, Bella, and Auntie Madge. And we were dis discussing the upcoming holidays. Out of the blue, she said to me, Alicia, we have a Western Union and a you know, because we can't take a crowd. <laughs> I laughed and said, Boy, Auntie Pauline, the only way you're going to go to Western Union is if you're going to hold up down there, because I won't be sending you there. She laughed and she said, Chop, to me, I feel two different man. We talked for a while until Janelia came to see her and she came off the phone. That was my last happy memory of her. Only for Bella to call the Saturday morning that she just brought her from the doctor and she would want to go over to the hospital. Cherise was there as well. We begged her to go and she said, no, take me home. If anything will happen, it will happen in Amiyan. I told her that was the best place for her right now. She said no. She's only gonna sit in a chair and die. She even went downtown to do grocery shopping. And I said to Bella, take her over there. She has no choice right now. Little did I know that she would, what was going to happen and we forced her. Even on the way there, she was dead set on not going. That was the last time we spoke. I even said to her, you don't want to go jump out of the car, and she kissed her to me. I don't know if I would ever get over the fact that we forced her to go there and she died. I so wish today we were sending her home, and instead we were having a party, and all the preparations 
that were made, she was here to partake of it, and she was the life of the party. Even if she was not present, she would be on video call right through the process, and she wanted her pictures as well. I was the planner, and she was the executor. I would say to her, Auntie Polly, you get ready. And she would say, what time were you picking me up? As they were traveling partners. I wish we had more time with her. I will never forget her and her jokes, her laugh, her little remarks. I don't have anyone now to call and complain to, especially about her sister. <laughs> No one to call and show her the nice curtains in the store or for her to say, put too many for something then one side on the way or you have to lift that with me. I can't, I will not forget her calling us every name except our name. I was Bella, Janet, every name except Alicia. In the days, months and years that lie ahead, when we talk about how things used to be, some will say this, some will say that. Some will say how much they loved her in the end. Some will remember the things she did for them, some won't. But on these things, we will have to agree. And to Pauline was wise, happy, and funny. The best mother, daughter, sister, auntie, maker and friend and in the hearts of her family she will be special from now until the end. Rest in peace sweet lady Holly.
so that she would have reflected on things of the Bible and on things of the of God. He wants all of us to be reflective in this way. Because what happened to Uncle Paul is also going to happen to us. We need to be ready. Amen? So the time, if God gives us a new body now, and also gives us a new city, a new place to live, guess what? Our brains are the same. Our minds are the same. I will not make use of it. We'll mash up the body and mash up the place. So what God is doing right now, even as you're sitting here mourning for Antipoly, what he's doing, he's trying to transform you so that you can get a new mind. So when Jesus returns, he gives you a new body. And then the Bible says he's going to create a new earth, more beautiful than what he created before. I'm going to remind you of such a place. It is called the New Jerusalem.
every man will have to appear before the judgment of the God. And no man is excused. So the word post all is that her life time has expired. God has seen it fit to remove her. No, every one of us are alive now. And I want to, I want to listen to this little song because it's a dream that every one of us should have. And I know that each person will feel differently after hearing this song. I went to visit heaven in a dream one night.
to the special procession, I think it is, which will be the family floral tribute. I will now ask them to proceed their presentation. That was the loneliest. That was awesome. 
all the families doing something for their dear loved one. Isn't that wonderful? Give your, put your hands together for the family this afternoon. Yes, ma'am, that was well done, well orderly, well presented, and we thank you. We really appreciate that item. At this time, we are here, at this time in the program, we will we'll be collecting an offering in the aid of our community service department of our church. And our deacons will, and deaconess will be assisting, going around to assist in collecting the offering. You have afforded us to bring today. As we give, Lord, we ask that you bless it and bless us, bless our hearts, bless our pockets, bless our lives, dear Lord, and as we give funds, we'll give our hearts to you. Continue to be with the program, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The deacons will proceed as we sing the hymn, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the winters where the grace of God has stored. He has loosed a faithful life in all this.
Ask up and we praise him and give him all the glory. At this time, on our program, we have the meditation song. And this will be rendered by our members from our church. So we're going to ask the United Church members to get ready to come. Before they come, we need to let you know that in our midst, we have one of our pastors. His name is Lord Morgan. He is a beloved person for Sister Pauline. I know and I can remember even when she got married, she would call up Pastor Morgan. Pastor Morgan, Pastor Morgan. She loved him. And today we have asked him to come. Although he's not in our circuit, but he has dedicated a time to come here this evening to be a part of the thing, a part of the program. When a person loves a person, not you. You be with the person, even till the end, not you. So when a person, when you love each other, we must continue to do what? Come together. Family must do what? Come together. People must do what? Come together. We must all learn to just love to love each other. So this afternoon, we're going to ask the members of the church to come forward and sing for us, after which we will be favored. We will hear the word spoken by Pastor. Then we have the other items to continue. Thank you. Amen. All right, as we share this song with you, I know that Auntie Pauline can't hear us. But as we share with you, we hope that this song will be a blessing and it will draw us closer to God in our time of living with it.
that was indeed not just a beautiful song, but indeed a message in song. I don't have to cross Jordan alone. Very, very encouraging, taken into consideration or context at this moment. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we have traveled from various places today to pay final respects to someone who would have contributed significantly and would have touched many lives. Many can attest to the fact that they are better off now than they were years ago because of what Sister Pauline would have done. So your presence here today is very much indicative of the relationship you would have shared and the connection with the family. I consider myself also very much connected to the family. Hence, the main reason why I'm here today. A few years ago, I had the wonderful privilege of watching a beautiful young lady strolling down the aisle. I had the wonderful privilege of making the statement I pronounce you husband and wife. Her, small, her, her smile was as broad as the ocean. She was happy, just getting ready to live. Today, we say farewell, but we are hopeful even as we shed our tears. We're confronted with the inevitable that in the midst of life, there is death. And that we pass this way but once. And so I observe that it is indeed a thanksgiving service, a loving memory of an extraordinary woman. So many things would have been said about Sister Pauline, today it's more of just the icing of the cake saying farewell dear sister, see you in the morning. And what a glorious morning it is going to be. I've also taken note that she was born in the year 1965, the glorious sunrise she had. I've also taken note that she would have viewed her final sunset on December 3, 2023, and the dash is very significant. We have been promised 70 years of life. I did my calculation, and I hope that I'm correct, that she would have had 58 years of life. The Bible says that our years are three, four years, and 10, 70. And if by reason of strength, we would get to 80 and beyond. She never had the privilege of getting to 70. But oh how 58 years must have done wonders. Some of us can speak safely if we say we understand. Because it is true that every heart knows 
its own sorrows. Yet we are reminded by Paul that weeping by the psalmist David rather in Psalm 30 verse 5 that weeping may endure but for a night but joy is coming in the morning. Hence I will hinge my sermon under the caption the last teardrop. Bow your heads with me as I pray. Father, give us the strength today to endure these trying moments. May we find grace and strength in the time of need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The last teardrop. Sin surpassing so many tears already would have fallen. And why? Because she was not just another person. She was special. She was not ordinary, but woman extraordinary. The broad smiles, the delicious cooking, words of encouragement, lives being touched and lives being changed because of her influence. So why shouldn't we cry? It is in order for us to cry. But the good news is this, the day is coming when the last tear will fall. You know what the Bible says. In John 11, and I'll just read, read a few verses and say a few things, and uh, then I'll take my seat. The Bible tells us in John 11, and from verse 23, the Bible says, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me Though he may die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And the question, do you believe this? So if I tell you that I'm from this place in Jamaica where very close to a compound town where I want to believe that Duffy stories originated. Well, we were so afraid when I was a child because we had little or no understanding of the state of the dead. It was a time when folk put up our shoe on their doors. They say to prevent the dead one from coming back. Persons were placed in the sepulchre with corn grains to ensure that they were planted. Their big toes were tied to ensure that they would not come back walking. We were encouraged to wear certain colors so as to prevent the dead from following us home. Persons would turn the bed after the passing of a loved one. And you suspect that Tuppy was following you, you will pretend to strike a match and throw it behind you, they say, and the dead person would spend all night looking for it. So we were pretty much afraid of the dead back then. But I have 
seen a strange thing happening in the 21st century. Persons have candle lighting ceremony, and I was told that it is one of the ways to help the dead to find his or her way back home. Martha struggled with the words of Jesus. When Jesus said, your brother shall live again, I can speak with certainty based on the word of God that Sister Lesno shall live again. If you believe it, say amen. Martha, Martha's response was most profound. She said, yes, Lord. I know that Lazarus shall live in the resurrection of the last day. Against the background, I speak about the last tear drop before the last day. But look at how Jesus was responding to Martha. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, while all those who have died will be resurrected, in particular Jesus was here saying, all those who have laid down the burdens of life, believing that I am the Lord Jesus Christ, and will have surrendered their lives, shall live again. In other words, there is no joy in living outside of Christ. Amen. There is no honor in dying outside of Christ, may I suggest on the word of God that one can only be resurrected in Christ if such person had died in Christ. Uh, are you sleeping or you're still there? And I see people today have little or no time for Jesus. That's sad. Uh, some one of our singers would say you're a little dangerous. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. So while all the dead who have died will come back from, from where they will have been buried, Jesus is here saying, only those who have died in Christ will be resurrected in Christ. But who are we to decide who have died in Christ and who did not die in Christ? I have come to discover something about God that even in your final moment, if you turn to Jesus, Jesus will turn to you. Say amen. So, no one here is worthy to judge anyone or to decide where anyone is going. Our destiny lies in the hand of Jesus. Say amen. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me. So in other words, you see, I, I did her wedding many years ago, but I, I never had the opportunity to follow her progress. But I want to believe that in her final moment, she must have had a talk with Jesus Christ. I want to believe that when she discovered that when everything was not going well, she must have said something to Jesus. And God is faithful and just to be merciful even in trying times. He who believes in me, though ye were dead, and I'll tell you, you are looking beautiful today. That's good news. Sad news. All of us, if time should last, we're going to die. Somebody once said that like sand through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are only passing through. This world is not our own, our, our home. You know, years, a few years ago, I thought I was going to live forever. And all of a sudden I saw gray hair started coming. I was not really emotionally to embrace it. And I discovered then as I know now that I'm just passing through. Sister Pauline had her life. 
the day of judgment is coming when God will give to her a just reward. So he who believes in me, though he were dead, and she's dead, we don't teach purgatory, that's not in the word of God. She's not coming back to tell you what bush to boil or give you fancy dreams. She must rest until her appointed time. For it's appointed unto man once to die. But after death comes the judgment. This is not the death you fear. This is because of Adam's sin. Bible says because of one man's sin. So she's not dead because of her sins. She's dead because of Adam's sin. However, if she did not surrender her life to Jesus Christ, the Bible says she will be resurrected in the second resurrection, but then she will be held accountable for her own sin. What are you saying, preacher man? It is important to seek the Lord before you die. Say amen. amen. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. What a glorious morning it is going to be. The song says, the golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to their promised home. One of these days, the graves will be cracked. The body of the saints will be connected. Jesus will say, gather my saints together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So if you have not yet given your heart to Christ, I have a question. What are you waiting for? The next funeral service could be mine. And I live in that consciousness. The next funeral service could be yours. If you should die today, would there be hope for you? If you should lay down the burdens of life, God forbid that today is your last day, would it be well with your soul? Jesus says, He who liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Therefore, 58 years have expired. The lady with the golden smile, a heartbeat, ever beat one of love. One who touched so many lives would have gone the extra mile. By reason of a sinful world, her life is now at an end. But there is hope in God. There is hope in Jesus. We are not hopeless. The grave is not final. Jesus will come one of these days. He shall say to the north, give up. He shall say to the south, hold not back. Gather my sons and my daughters from there. Daniel says that many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall away. You know where I live, the water pressure is very low. And so oftentimes I go to my bed thinking about getting up and catching water. As soon as I am conscious, my first thought is this. Get up and catch water. The same way we die is the same way we will be resurrected. If she had died with Jesus on her mind, she will come back with Jesus on her mind. One of these days, the dust shall be stirred. And the Bible says many of those that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake. I have some children and they sleep from dusk to dawn. And when I try to wake up, wake them up, they just roll over and they say, Daddy, I'm tired. One of these golden mornings when the voice of Jesus shall pierce through the opening of Orion, when the saints' name shall be called, the righteous shall turn in their dusty bed. They shall say to the death, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Brothers and sisters, the best friend to have is through Jesus. So then, farewell, dear sister. 
We will see you by God's grace in the morning. Family members cry if you must. Tear is still a language that God understands. But one of these days, God himself shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. There shall be no more crying. There shall be no more suffering. Mother and daughter shall be reunited. Daughter and child shall be united in the resurrection. Paul says, comfort the saints with these words. God bless you. Keep on holding on. Keep on believing. For we be may endure but for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. God bless you all. Sweet Jesus. And my mind 
thing was just to go home, go home. My mom says to me, what, 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 what happened? Is that, is that a mission? I said, yes, yeah. because I came home twice after four years, twice, back to back. I went to the hotel with my granddaughter and we spent some time. And I, my grandson drove me to Pauline house. And I said, I'm going to spend the rest of time with Pauline. And we had so much fun. But to me, there was this calling that somebody said, go home, go to Flower Hill, go spend time with your sister. And that's what I did. And today, friends, I don't regret it because I know I saw my sister like a couple of weeks before she died. I was with her. We cook together, we go out together, we do everything together. I remember when I was coming home, I said to her, I said, Polly, no, I saw Tylee to carry her home with me. And she went out and she came back and I asked somebody to light the fire, to come and light the fire for me. And when she came back, I was frying the fish. I said, I hope you somebody can fry fish in the end. I said, I'm in. Because you're gone and I'm waiting for you to come. And she come and she sit down and the room and she and Jamai. We cook and we put everything together. And I didn't know it was the last time I was going to see my sister. But I personally, I had hope. I know my God living, and I have hope. We were born and raised in the church. We know God. It's no if and but. We know God, and I have. I know my sister. I said to her, "Body, every body my bungalow man come here. You know every everything all of them want. The one I want one two hundred dollar. The one I want one bread. The one I want two cake. I said, so you know what everything they want? He says, me know them, but me know what they want." My sister in Williamsville was like Mother Teresa. She was the Mother Teresa. I'm telling you that. She was the Mother Teresa. And because of that, I know that was her God. And I have no fear because death. She can die. But in Christ, I know she can live. And we, my family, let us hold on together. Let us be as one. My mother be strong. You have four of us here. But God will take care. God will give us the strength of yes. yes. Tears we will shed. Yes. I know I have a warm time with my sister. Every time she cooks, she says to me, say you're so crazy, you know, eat the food, you just want to see the food. Because we want the food, but we don't have no appetite for the food. And she, she said to me, say, you know, throw away, now give me it, we will eat it. And she will eat, and she said, who are we? just so crazy for the food, and you know, eat the food. I said, Paul, you don't know what I don't mean, have no appetite. This is the way they ask for the food. You come in like a rubber. You just want to see the food like a rubber. And not uh, eat the food. So you will eat the food. I know my time was well spent with my sister. I enjoyed my sister. I raised her those two little ones, Pauline and Maxine. I was like the mother for them. Because my mom always sick. And I help my mother to raise Pauline and Maxine. My sister, I love you. And I know I'm not here to judge you. God knows everything best. And I know you know God. And even at the last split moment, my sister, I know you call upon God. I am not going to shed no tears because I said don't shed no tears. My sister find peace. My sister find rest. And it's just for us the balance to that leave behind. Let us look up because redemption is right now. Yeah. She's wiser than me, and I can give you one instant. And I look back and I said, 
that was so true. When we were growing up, we were eating a piece of cane, and she had the knife, and I wanted the knife from her. And she had the handle, and I be the foolish one, broke onto the, 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 the blade of the knife, and even to this day, I have the three, my three fingers that she pulled the knife through, and cut my three fingers. But that we were sitting at the time, we looked at each other, it was, it was nothing. We overlooked that. God knows the type of person I can remember. She loved to play cricket. Oh my God, no young boy in the area would play cricket as Polly. When we go to play cricket up on their tree, everybody wants her on their side because she can lick the ball harder than any man. That was my sister. When we used to go to the river to catch water, we never have pipe water. Everybody grow up poor. We had to go to the river to catch water. And each time we go to the river to catch water, Polly would take a swim. And she not regular swim, she would die. And as soon as she come home, I'm out pull her here. I'm out pull her here and the water and I'm out chop her in her head with this comb. Her <laughs> hair never moves. She'll never have long hair. She always she always have to go to the river to swim. And she always got in, a, in argument with my mother. But she was always the person who will defend you. My first fight that I had when I we were going to school. I be the foolish one, she be the wise. She's in a fight and I went to join the fight. And at the end she ran out of the fight and leave me and I was the one who was the one. So each time I said, for two, I am, she's always better than me because in our circumstances, she always come out victorious. I can remember another, another instant. Pauline, when we were going to bush, when on Fridays, Papa would dig them and we would go carry the basket. And Papa would put the amount of food in the basket. By the time we reach for where the food is, the basket, all the basket like the basket. She not carry no load. She threw away all of the food on the road as we were going to talk. She threw away the food. She said she not carry no load. And she was not doing it. She was very determined. She and my father, they shared the same birthday. And if Papa said to Pauline, Pauline, don't go there, so. Oh, you send me a go. Me a look at her. I mean, no, me a get to be. I mean, what for me going? Uh, Papa was determined if she fall asleep, but I'll wake her and beat her. <laughs> so I'm telling you, my sister was just that type of loving and kind sister. After only Pauline and I were here, my other three sister migrated years ago. And Pauline and I have this relationship. And when I went away, I said to her, Pauline, me and you are alone in Libya. Girl, you know yourself. Anything may happen to me and you because you know when me and you come from. Me and you one way that they were part of four years. So no worries yourself. And last year, can you remember, on my 60th birthday, we went to Panama and I had two Pauline and two grand, two sons and grandson. And we never, I never had so much fun and laughter in all my life. We were playing Ludo, playing Ludo, and Ludo. And Pauline was the one who born last, and at the end, Pauline win. And the soon as the end, Pauline won on home. Pauline, the penalty was born, and you are gone home. I never laugh, we never have seen you in our life. And she, she would not go there, she would not go there to sleep. She would not have a sister, everything else was along with her. She would not go there to sleep. We went to Antigua together, and we went to like, me and Bella having a pull her in her water, and she said, she would not go there to no, sleep. But me, I said to myself, she is still, she is still, all her youthful days are ready. So now that she tells us to me, she has relaxed and enjoyed it, 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 it. But Polly, I'm telling you, girl, I love you and I miss you. You are you are as mother to my daughter. And when I'm still here, I know where we're coming from. I know my daughter. And sometimes when I used to go away, I said I don't like hearing the phone ring because I just know that something wrong. And sometimes something happened. Polly don't even call. I don't. If after things turn around, but I know so better than say. Polly was that type of person. I always say Polly. Regina yours and John Delamine. I have three girls and she has three boys. 
So let me tell you something, Polly. I will always love you. I love you in life and I love you till death. Because you were a mother to my children. I trust me. Don't worry about Johnny and Chubby. They will be well protected because I know if it was me that died, I know my children will be protected. So sleep on my sister. Sleep on and take your rest. And I hope in that new by and by we will be Why well said my sister? I'm gonna pick that from where my sister left off. Five years ago, we celebrated my sister wedding, and five years later, we are here mourning the loss of a very kind, hardworking, generous, beautiful woman. Today, Polly let go, and God take charge of this life of hers, knowing in the dark corners of her soul. His life is beginning to shine. All of the cares and worries she carried around for so long has been lifted from her shoulders and filled her heart with love. Problems that were overwhelming suddenly seem very small. And comes what may, starting today, she knows she can handle it. But God will see you through. And don't worry. The other four will take care of you. If you are troubled, let go and let God take charge of your life. And however, however dark life shall seem, this life, his life, will come shining through. Rest in peace, my beautiful, my generous, hardworking. A beautiful sister, love always. You know, my side of the story and what happened. 
but she attacked me for her auntie. And um, end up talk and talk and talk until she end up hanging, hanging up before, get off the phone. And without even hearing my side, I end up sending her a voicemail and a day or so later she listened to it and she said, okay. And I was thinking to myself, I said, man, I can't wait to tell Paul in this. Because we know how Paul in where we are to this story. So fast forward a couple of weeks, came down to Jamaica the 22nd of November. And uh, um, I didn't get to see Pauline. I was in Kingston traveling back and forth. And I saw Pauline the 28th. Uh, the 27th. I went back the 28th. I shared the story with her, what happened on the phone, the incident. And of course, most of us know Pauline's reaction. She laughed. Laughed about what happened. And she gave me a lick in her shoulder blade. <laughs> One big lick in her shoulder blade. I must, it took me about three days. I tell you, at least three days. Because you know, Pauline, everybody experienced a lick from her when she allowed. Everybody. And Janet. <laughs> That's where she gets it from. But I shared it instead with her and she said, yeah, she, she, she knew about it. She, she um, you know, the person knew her. And all we do was talk and laugh about it. All we did was talk and laugh about it. And she said to me, then I saw them stay there. They cross when they come out to their auntie, they love them auntie. They love them auntie and they will do anything for them auntie. And I was I know I was there because a lot of kids hang out at Pauline house. This is how you know the heart of a person. The amount of kids that hang around that gravitate towards her. And she's that kind of person. Everybody gravitate towards Pauline. This is what one of the reasons why she has one of the biggest video, the biggest funeral. She's not rich, but she's rich with love. Rich with love. And that, that can take you a long way. So after we share the incident with her and we laugh and talk about it, she said, you know, I was I was leaving. I was leaving and um, you know, we say, oh may I come back December, we see you December. And I remember she, you know, I looked back and she waved and that was the last time I saw Pauline. The next time I saw Pauline, I was bringing her my castle. She went to the, um, the church. And I, you know, have a special relationship with her for years. And, you know, I'm going to miss her, I love her. And Pauline, rest in peace. You know you're love.
I would always have to send my job of cash in for her. It's painful, but I keep that she would prepare for me. I could tell she prepared it, but she would ensure there was a scotch by the camera, scholar and three time in the Friends and family took it for granted that there was always something ready to eat. Thank you for being a blessing in my life. She was a true angel, and I am more grateful than the words can express. She would always tell my mother to stop talking and let the world breathe. <laughs> Few people possess the considerate, unselfish, loving heart that Auntie Pauline had, and even fewer are willing to give so many of themselves. Of all the special gifts in life, however, great or small, to have her as our aunt was the greatest of all. May the winds of love blow softly and whisper in your ear. We love you and miss you and to I wish that you were here. We will miss her smile that would that could brighten so this day and always made us feel good when we were most of her grace. It is hard to accept that she is gone forever. Deep in our hearts, her life is kept to love and cherish and not forgotten. She was a special person. The love we had together will never grow old. It will only get stronger as we are now apart. It is hard to accept that she is gone forever. Even though there is no one is gone forever, and her hands we cannot touch, but in our thoughts she will always remain. No more tomorrows we can share, but yesterday will always be there. We are reminded of how lovely we are and how blessed we have been to have you as our own and also as our friend. In the night, this at the party, Sunday night was at work. This at the party in Ghana, and it's a call. And I called one of my church sisters and I said, Go and I call and said, I know a theater. I said, Listen to me, I'm going to the right, right, no, go look back to the party. I said, Okay, I said, Somebody, the next call again, at the party died. I could not ever believe that. But it's to say to all of us, brothers and sisters, family, friends, make our calling and election sure because. These days we are living in, death is closer than we think. And only when we live our life for Christ, we will reap that benefit in that by and by. But remember this afternoon, you may feel down and feel like God has forgotten, but he is with you to the end. You may feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten.
the anxiety experienced earlier has now disappeared and is now being celebrated with the birth of a daughter, the fourth of five girls. They named her Lesma Andy Hewitt, affectionately called Pauline. Perchance, this is a notion of great things to come. The name Lesma means the bearer, or powerful, bold, rigid, determined, yet charismatic. Kenneth and Wilbereen understood the need to provide a secure and loving environment for their daughter, and they combined their efforts to this end. Pauline was a spirited baby, happy and full of play, as she basked in the love of her parents and older siblings who doted on her. One would wonder if Kenneth and Wilbereen were deliberate in naming their daughter a name synonymous with being compassionate, cheerful, sociable, someone who adores colorful, bright surroundings and attracted to persons who has problems and is looking for support. Then at her birth, they had, they had envisioned for her a path and this path was woven with love. Kenneth and Wilbury weren't traditional academics, but they knew the value of being able to read and write. School was non-negotiable, and Pauline did not rebel. On relocating to Williamsfield at the age of three, Pauline was enrolled and formally educated at Sister G Basic School then William C. All Age School, after which she attended the then Savannah Mar Senior School, now Arthur Stewart High. She was an earnest and keen student and garnered a robust education. Pauline's quest for learning was perennial, and sitting at home idly was not to be considered. Her interest in cosmetology was soon sparked at Miss Rankin's beauty school in Savannah Lamar, where she studied hairdressing. Upon completion of beauty school, she practiced her skills on her nieces, sisters, but never fully explored the option. Pauline's favorite sport was cricket and could be seen on the ball field in Rice Feast on Sundays or holidays playing with the men in the community. She loved to go swimming in the river and would have to take a dive even though she was worn countless times by mama not to wet her hair. She would still do it knowing she was going to get a proper spanking later. Polly sought employment with Nutrition Products Limited and after many years working as a casual worker, she gained permanency in 1989 and worked for 18 years before resigning in 2004. She was successful in gaining a placement with the Overseas Hospitality Program, where she worked for four years. Pauline and Bravo found soulmates in each other. And after many years of companionship, they got married on April 29, 2019. The union produced two sons. Her nursing skills were developed while providing care for him due to his health failing and up to the time of his death in August 2021. One of the basic hallmarks of humanity is benevolence. Pauline believed that it is life that gives unto life, and her benevolence was boundless and extraordinary. This made her a friend to the local community. She assisted countless individuals in and around the community for as long as I can remember. Even on the day she got sick, she was offering her help. She was the go-to person for a loan. She was a nurse, even though not formally trained, a chef, providing hot meals most of the day, most days of the week, specifically on Sundays. 
On New Year's Day, she would cook a meal that would tantalize your taste buds. I would look forward to seeing those pictures, especially that part of those beef. Sadly, 2023 was the last feast. She was a counselor, a lawyer, a defender for her family. We were never wrong for her, but she would tell you in person that you are wrong. Her house was open to many individuals who needed a place to stay for the short or long term. Despite all the assistance that she gave and all the good deeds that she had done, when she needed the help in return, it was not to be. The health system failed her and left us all to mourn. Lesman Hewitt Henry Pauline was our pillar and tower of strength, and she loved us all without a doubt. She was interested in the everyday concerns of her family. She adored her sons and grandchildren and was their support system. They knew she loved them unconditionally. She had the most infectious laugh and radiant smile. Her warmth and compassion was proverbial. Those who knew her loved her tenderly. She was a beacon for all mankind. Her once hearty laughter became faint and indiscernible as we watched her once healthy opulence nod away by a sudden sickness. At current call on December 3, 2023, at 8 15 p.m., her master class ended. Her legacy is secured. She has left a name to shine. We will remember the best portion of her life as it was good. Her little nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and love. Rest well, sweet lady Pauline, mummy, grandma, auntie Pauline, Miss Speed. Leave to mourn her loss are her three sons, Clan, John L. and Javel. Six grandchildren, Harper, Tristan, Christy, Justin, Glenn and Janelia, mother Wilburine, daughters-in-law, five sisters, Gloria, Hopi, Jeanette, Madge, and Maxine, one brother, Vincent, six nieces, six nephews, grandnieces, and grandnephews, four aunts, one uncle, cousins and other family members are, and friends. There are no goodbyes for us. Wherever you are, you will always be in our hearts. For what we have once deeply enjoyed, we can never lose, for it becomes a part of us. Let us dwell on the words of Nishan and Seneca. We are stories in the end remembered by the adventures we had, the achievements we made, and the people we love. As is a tale, so is a life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, is what matters. So make sure your story is a good one. Thank you.
Lord, in these moments of grief, we remember your words that you will never leave your children nor forsake them. Today, Lord, I present before you and to you the members of the bereaved family. As their faces are different, Lord, so are their needs. These are trying and testing moments for every member. I ask Heavenly Father that you will take care of them in a very special way. That in these moments when hearts are broken, that you will remind them that one of these days, everything will be made right. Help them to know also, Lord, that there will be sunshine after rain. And God, who has been there in the beginning, will always be there until the very end. I pray even now that you will bring them closer than any other time in their existence. May each one help the other as they look forward to the glorious sunrise. When you shall come, Lord, when the dead in Christ shall rise first, we look forward to seeing Sister Pauline in the resurrection. I pray that each family member will be present and accounted for. Even now, as we will believe in the church, I ask that you will be with them in a special way. As some will travel back to their respective places, may your presence and your grace be sufficient. Hear my prayer on their behalf, in Jesus' name.
Thank you.